Well, remember what I said a couple of videos ago about the plan that I had and that was supposed to support me with getting rid of things that I don't need in my collection of old equipment. Well, that plan has backfired a little bit because it led to me getting another piece of equipment. Well, I can now do at least something with Betacam SP cassettes. I've got a portable video cassette recorder for these uh, professional broadcast uh, cassettes. And this sure is a professional piece of equipment. I mean, it doesn't look like much from the front, but so we zoom in at the side, take a look at all those connections and all those settings. This is really quite something. <laughs> I guess you're all going to agree. Well, have the access uh, panel unscrewed. There is the inside. We do have a cassette in there. And lots and lots of uh, complex electronics and complex mechanism. Really quite something. Really quite something. There's quite a story behind it, this thing. A friend of mine actually fished this out of a dumpster, of all things. Yep, someone just dumped it. And he got it, and years ago we already tried to uh, do something with this and, uh, you know, power it up and get it to do something, but we, we kind of failed, which was, well, I guess partly because we had absolutely no clue of how to operate this. And then the other problem there was the power supply. Now, as you can see, this is... The Sony power supply, it's just a 12 volt affair, it's really nothing special. And this, you can probably tell, this is much older than this thing right there. And used to contain a switch mode power supply, which was insanely noisy, which was probably due to bad capacitors. Now, my friend uh, decided to rip out the original power supply and replace it. Uh, so the original circuitry is gone, can't fix that anymore. Um, but what we have instead is this. This is one of these industrial units. This is a 12-volt, 8.4-amp switch mode power supply, which would be used for industrial setups in factories, production facilities. And this just fits into here. And covers are over there, by the way. I already have the marks drawn for some holes that I'm going to drill to mount this uh, new power supply in the case of the old one. So this is now uh, this is now mine. Uh, I traded it basically. Uh, my friend got the screen of a broken laptop that I had, a broken ThinkPad, and I got this in exchange. So, anyway, let me go ahead and uh, fire up the drill press so that we can uh, get this all assembled, so that we can have a functional power supply. Well, we are using the laboratory power supply, but that is only to test a part of this. Uh, as you can see, it does have a power indicator light down there. Uh, my friend had already put in an LED. I think originally this would have still come with a light bulb. Uh, but this LED was extremely dim, so what I did was I put in a super bright white LED, and I tell ya, <laughs> that is definitely going to be very, very visible. So, got that done. Got the holes drilled, so basically it now is a question of uh, putting on these... Um, the, uh, the cable fasteners that will allow me to screw all the cables into these screw terminals. I already checked the uh, the ground connection right here. It's connected to the uh, to the housing, so I won't have to do anything with that because obviously this housing is going to be connected to this housing, and that housing is connected to ground right there. So that's going to be fine. I don't trust these crimp connectors, so as you can see, I am actually soldering them onto the wires for safe contact. I got the new power supply unit wired up, of course, with these screw-on terminals. That really isn't all too complicated. 
did quite like that. So got uh, got a variety of connections on the back. Of course, these are when you use this power supply for a uh, for a video camera. That's what these connectors are for. The AC input got a voltage selector with fuse. Uh, won't be using this obviously because uh, this one doesn't have a voltage selector and it has a fuse built in. Uh, so this connector is just uh, gonna lay in there. It doesn't disturb anything, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. There's the camera connector, the DC output, that's of course what we need for our recorder. That's hooked up right there, and in parallel to that, of course, we have the power LED. Well, I got the whole thing plugged in, so here comes the moment of truth. Let's uh, press the power and see what happens. Well, I'd say that works. So uh, what I want to do now, you can see we got this little potentiometer, and I uh, I guess this might be a voltage adjustment. So I'm gonna get a meter hooked up to the output, and uh, we're gonna adjust this for precisely 12 volts. And here we have the finished product. Readjusting the voltage was definitely worthwhile because that was set to 13 and a half volts. So I got that corrected. Got this screwed in place. Got the wiring cleaned up, and uh, the connectors right here at the back ended up being a little too close to the power supply, so I'm stuck in a piece of cardboard to fix that. I'd say that's that, so let's put it back together and see if we can fire up the VCR.